Well, th this is all a very long extended way for us to con you into sending us Ornithomimosaur feet pics. Um... <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Paleontologist Rank, the Dinosaur Designs of Jurassic World Evolution 2. We've got a real stinker for you today. But before you see how much this dinosaur sucks, you should know that I'm James Napoli, a postdoctoral researcher at North Carolina State University and the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. You don't need to know this, but I am Amelia Zietlow, and I'm a PhD candidate at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. This may or may not be relevant for your future life decisions, but my name is Scott Johnston, and I am the vertebrate paleontology fossil preparator and technician at the Harvard University Museum of Comparative Zoology. You have known this all your life, but I'm the collection of exhaustion and internal sadness that dripped down from the stars millennia ago. I have many names. One of them is Alex Rubenstahl. This part of me resides at Yale University as a PhD student. But you all knew this. You've known it forever. And you'll know it after you're dead. And I'm Dalton Meyer. <laughs> and I don't believe that names are a joking matter. I'm also a PhD student at Yale University. And together, we're the skeleton crew. So, um, those Before we take a look at Archaeornithomimus, uh, you should remember to like and subscribe, even though this video is about Archaeornithomimus. I know that that's not very incentivizing for any sort of engagement with our content whatsoever, but it would be really cool of you to like and subscribe, so please do it. Like it in solidarity. Like it for the fact that we went through this for you. We did this you for make you. make it worthwhile. Thank you. And I guess to start us off, Dalton, why don't we see these animals come into the world? Let's do it. Don't try to We're sound too in the way. way. We don't. It's quick. Like, oh. is thrilling, but... I like that they run. It's cute. They, they do, do run. run. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give it to. I'm gonna give them this right out the bat. I'm gonna right out the bat. I don't right know why I said it that way. <laughs> we did the bat. I'm, I'm gonna give them a positive before we go super negative. I like a lot of the colors. I like a lot of the color and pattern mixes. There's these. so many. Um, there's a lot of them. They do have some of. Ooh. Oh, they just kind of they, they pack around like the chickens, at awful chickens, each other. Amazing. Um, they do have some of the most gorgeous coloration of any of the ornithomimosaurs we have in game. It is a shame that their model is probably the worst. Oh, because... Not even probably. Yeah, because the colorations are really nice. I, uh, you know, I'm very based in Brian Frogzak pilt, and I think that the idea of vertical striping on dinosaur tails is really cool and should basically always be done. Um, <laughs> we also Brian Frogzak actually passed away recently, which is very sad. His art was oh. great. Um, he, he illustrated a very small dinosaur book that uh, it was like the. It was, I think, the Audubon Pocket Field Guide to Dinosaurs or something. It was in the 90s. I had it, and I loved his art so much, and I looked at it so close. that as a child, I lacerated my cornea on the edge of the book page and had to wear an <laughs> oh. iPad for a month. This is true. That's horrifying. <laughs> I, uh, which is why in my family, the, the book is referred to as the dinosaur book that James cut his eye on. <laughs> can I, this is true. You can, you, any of you can ask my mother about this. I will. While we're talking about colors, can I ask for people's opinion? I'm going to find one that's in the sun. Because there's something I truly hate. There's something that I think is just disgusting and awful. Which is, I think they've got, like, dark spots in their leg pits. Like, we're, like right here. See, oh, where the leg, okay. Is I'm... it the shadow of the body? Because they're so horribly shaped? I'm, I'm not convinced just... that that isn't a model error or something. That, like, it looks like it's... it's it... Oh no! Yeah, it's, it, they're they're one of those cows that just have the the hole in the side that you could reach in and touch their guts. Uh, no, that's awful. I hate that. I, mean, I think really that's real color like though. It. I think that's painted. I think, yeah, I think it's a coloration thing. Which that's a choice. It's a strong choice. I don't he, like. Listen, it. those are big leg muscles. They're working very hard. He's sweating. There's a dark stain under his legs. <laughs> it's okay. So no, what can we say about Archaeonithomimus? Bad. It's the oldest, um, possibly. What? It's possibly the oldest Ornithomimus that's featured in the game. It's the most basal one, at least. 
Yeah, although it's not particularly basic. No, it's still within like Ornithomime Day. Um, how old is it? Is it? Maybe ninety-two, or maybe was. <laughs> Well, or, or, yeah, so so how old is it is a good question. This is from a rock unit called the Irin Dabasu Formation. The Irin Dabasu Formation was actually one of the first Gobi Desert dinosaur deposits found. I should note, it's not in the Mongolian Gobi Desert. It's in the part of the Gobi Desert that's now in China. Hmm. Um, it was found before the Judokta Formation that later made, you know, the AM and H trips most famous for the dinosaur discoveries. It was one of the first, like, pretty productive dinosaur bearing deposits that AM and H crews went to in the early 20s. And so a couple things come from there, like Bactrosaurus, um, there's another Hadrosaur, and Archaeornithomimus. Right, so so the Aaron Debasu formation is historically important, even though it's kind of been dwarfed in importance because we now have localities in Central Asia, in Mongolia and in China, where you can just pull out whole dromaeosaurs and like entire families of baby dinosaurs. So nobody's really working that hard in a place that is more normal in terms of its production. Stephanir and Debasu is generally not incredibly well preserved with surface resolution and is pretty isolated. So there's a lot of things, there's a lot of material, but it's harder to interpret. It's not just like full skeletons preserved in articulation. Um, a lot of the material that the AM and H collected there was never formally described. I'm actually working on describing one of the taxa that comes from there. Um, this is, for those in the know, Devil Raptor. Yeah. Um, right. So, and everybody else will get to hear about it later when I publish that paper eventually. Um, Archaeornithomimus is one of the few things that did get named. Um, it was not named in the 20s by a and paleontologist. It was named in 1972 by Dale Russell. Um, there's a lot of material. It's probably from several individuals it's all pretty isolated. Like there's a lot of stuff, but it's not informative stuff. It does seem to be the most basal in my mid or in the game and uh, one of the only members of the group. What's interesting about her in Tabasu is that we have no idea how old it is. Like at all. Because how? based on the types of dinosaurs that are preserved, well, I mean, we know within like 40 million years. Um, that is baffling. Right. Well, so so there's a reason why. The rock layers in the Gobi Desert are actually pretty isolated in where they outcrop, or crop out, rather. And so it's hard to find the context between the rock units that tell you how old they are relative to each other. And there's no beds of ash or anything that you could use for consistent radiometric dates. Mm. So everything's done by correlation of rock units, and it takes, like, going over the entire Gobi Desert, which for those of you who don't know, is quite large. And looking for the very few contacts between beds. So a lot is also done biostratigraphically where we're looking at the relative development of the dinosaurs and other animals to see which one might be older or younger. Based on the types of dinosaurs preserved at Irin Dabasu, there's a similarity to the dinosaur fauna at a different locality called Bayan Shari. And so the idea has been that they are closely related dinosaur farms, with some species maybe even shared. The problem is that a recent study looking at the microfossils of Irin Dabasu, which are generally much more reliable for determining age because they're, you know, they're abundant and they're quite typified, indicate that Irin Dabasu is actually from the latest Cretaceous and the Mastrichtian. And so that this animal would be alive at the same time T-Rex was alive in North America. Hmm. Hmm. Um, if that is true, Irin Dabasu is remarkably only, maybe by chance, preserving the more primitive animals that lived in the ecosystem and not anything that's more highly developed or more derived. And so it's just based on random chance of what we found there that we have like a primitive ornithomimosaur and a primitive hadrosaur and other such animals. I mean, and a be... primitive tyrannosaur, electrosaurus. Could it, could it be a valley of an insert, like, like a lost world. Like a skull island. Yeah. I mean, at this point, perhaps. It's very weird. Um, there's also like, I think, more basal therizinosaurs. There's fairly basal ornithom or oviraptorosaurs. 
you have the two hadrosaurs of Bactrosaurus and Gilmoriosaurus, which are not entirely, like not very derived hadrosaurs either. So it, it's baffling. Um, I have heard people argue that there's some issue with the interpretation of the microfossils and that this is actually an earlier or mid Cretaceous ecosystem. Um, the jury's still out. It's very weird. It's something I'm very interested in because, um, you know, some of the things have been interpreted as being like transitional in the mid Cretaceous preservational gap. And if this isn't in the mid Cretaceous, that interpretation does not hold up. Um, it would be cool if this is showing that a lot of these more primitive dinosaur radiations did have representatives surviving until later. And it would also make sense. Like tapirs are fairly primitive odd toed ungulates. They're still alive now, even though we also have horses. Mm. So that would kind of be what we're looking at here is an ecosystem where in most dinosaur faunas, we tend to have like one stage pretty well defined where if we go to the next fauna, everything is more derived. But you would expect that there'd also be these more primitive animals walking around in the ecosystem. We'd have the equivalent to having tapirs and rhinos alive mm. today. Um, and so I kind of hope that this does turn out to be like Cretaceous and that we're seeing a rare window into Mesozoic ecosystem composition. Yeah. But no idea yet. That'd be cool. I, you see something similar. Well, I say something similar. We see one instance similar in lizards in that um, what is consistently one of the most early branching animals on the entire lizard family tree outside of the crown, so it's, it's on the stem of lizards, is a, a Mexican animal called Hue Hue Quetzpali. And we know that the group appears in the Triassic. We know that like lizards appear in the Triassic and start to, to diversify. Um, but one of the best known members of the stem is from the Cretaceous. And it's just this whole lineage of stem lizards that we only have one guy clear up in the Cretaceous um, when it's at the very bottom of the tree. Well, that's kind of like how we only have Tuatara today. Yeah. yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. And they yeah. are very, it's, very localized. It's worth saying that like such a such a kind of environment is not unprecedented in the fossil record. And where the fossil record's generally better, i.e. marine invertebrates, these do show up sometimes, right? Like there's there's a almost archaic Cambrian fauna that's decently into the Ordovician. Mm -hmm. And then you still get like morellomorphs and, and uh radiodonts in like deep water Devonian biomes too. Right. So, like, it's yeah. completely within the realm of possibilities. Right. And it, it wouldn't even need to be that the entire fauna is this primitive. It's just that what we found of it is. Sure. So it could be that this was the local environment in the Maastrichtian where there, were, uh, there was a proliferation of more primitive animals. Or it could easily be that there were also more derived ones there and we just haven't found them there in Debasa yeah. yet. And that for whatever weird reason... You know, we buy. You would expect in small sample sizes that occasionally you get entirely fictitious results just through random stochastic processes, and this could be one of them. Where, yep, by random chance, the three major things we know about from Nerindabasu are more basal representatives of the groups that were also more derived at the time, and that there were more derived representatives of in the area that we just haven't found. Oh, yeah. Again, I don't think it's an area that's actively worked very much anymore, um, and that's probably part of why it's a mystery. Is that we're not, you know, we're not going there when we could go to the Ukatol gods or flaming cliffs and pull out entire dinosaur skeletons. Although flaming you know, cliffs, golly, also. I hope there are no wider-reaching implications of this <laughs> issue. I know. Luckily for everybody in, in this field, uh, I certainly don't have a paper in the works that's about systematic pervasive biases in the fossil record and how they might influence almost everything we do. Um, <laughs> Probably fine. It's it's fine. I was Probably talking to Jim Kirkland about the Flaming Cliffs because he went and dug with the Mongolians, I think, at least once. Was he, he in got... the Human Age expeditions? No, he wasn't. He, he just like went out there to help out. Cool. Um, but he said in the first hour I was at the Flaming Cliffs, I found a whole Velociraptor skull just at the surface. <laughs> uh, God, I, was like, Jim, I didn't want to go there. Jim. Oh, I was just going to say, it's interesting that we have so little to say about this design. That we we spent most of the time talking about the formation, and then just other paleontologists because, man, it's bad. Uh, but what, well, what it, do you want brought up? I have something. And the arms are so small. The arms are so small. They're so spindly. Uh, like I, I know I brought up in the Struthiomimus vid that the 
body on Struthiomimus, like its proportions are a little weird and its and its torso was a little too small. This thing is a rotisserie chicken that they stapled a tail to. It's its torso is so incredibly impossibly short and deep. It's awful. This thing, it, this this thing watched Russell's talk and was like, you know what? I'm going to incorporate this and just become short and fat. Um, except instead of making this way cooler of an animal, it made it horrifically cursed. This color scheme is not um, separating the the rotisserie image. <laughs> like it, now, it we... does just look like. Like this is a burnt that, chicken. That, that, so okay. I saw so earlier exactly like a grocery store with this chicken. That this one also has like horrible teeth. I it was going to ask like, about that. And holy, shit, those arms are so stupid. Like Silurosaurs tend to have big, big long arms. In fact, if you go to the A M H, the note about what a Silurosaur is says the Snapomorphia has relatively long arms. And I don't think it's meaningfully reduced in Archaeornithomimus. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but. Can we get a look as at far as I, I want to see if they even f up the manual eagles. It's hands. Let me let me try and find what's not in the river. It's 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 like they were modeling this animal and then they just kind of forgot it was supposed to have arms and then just drew little stick figure kid arms that kids do with crayon on there. Bad. I mean they're they are kind of straight, but like and they're facing the right way, but in like Struthiomimus, I remember them being very comparatively good yes how are its toes yeah its toes seem too short as well yeah it the all claws seems very, are very little it's no really not not tall. just the claws but the toes themselves seem a little too short yeah maybe our chances to tell. are we're gonna say this in the comments someone's gonna post like figures from a paper it's like well it's actually like that idiot <laughs> well, th this is all a very long extended way for us to con you into sending us Ornithomimosaur feet pics. Um, <laughs> I, you know what I really like? Is the, um, like, just the scales all the way to the end of the lower jaw. Like, there's no beak. No. Yeah, not even oh, a pretense yeah. of one. It's just <laughs> yeah, maybe no, here, it's... but that's also scales. No, that's At also least scales. At Ornithomimus, like, kind of tried. Yeah, right? they have the different coloring for, like, to imply keratin. Look at its <gasps> haunted eyes. And it's just like a little triangle head. It just is so ugly. It's shaped like a boat. <laughs> it's a boat-shaped animal. It read Jacques' paper about theropod systematics, and it said boat-shaped caudal chevrons. I'll give you a boat-shaped animal in general. Or something <laughs> presumably wittier than what I said. Um, <laughs> except probably not that witty, because these animals... On non-caudal vertebra? That's a good point. Thanks, Alex. Just looking out for you, man. Um, I know, I know. <laughs> it's a boat-shaped chevrons, which only occur on the caudal vertebrae. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was just mentioned about the, the horrible, awful, like, caricature teeth things that this thing has. So, as oh, a perfect timing. Oh, we got a mouth open. Mouth. All right, Arcade. Uh, look at how Mimus. stupid its profile is from the front. Show me what that mouth do, Arcade. This looks like Mimus. from the front. Hang on. You know what this reminds me of from the front, especially this green one? Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. The Stenonicosaurus from the Dinotopia miniseries. I don't know if that's what you were thinking, James. Oh, no. I was but... thinking of the Dougal Dixon book that has the wide mouth Troodon on the cover. Oh, that too. But I was thinking of the Stenon... like uh, I forget what his name is, but he's like the talking Stenonicosaurus in the Dinotopia miniseries. Oh, well, I'm brothers looking up. The... It, I'm looking that up right now. Look at the teeth, though. It was reminding me of uh, the <laughs> ye dinosaur from the... Ye. Man, Russian animation is really like... That was Italian. Stuff. That's Italian. Italian? Yeah, yeah. that's your guys doing. Yeah, uh, yeah, by yeah, the yeah. way, the, the Stenonychosaurus from Dinotopia is named, um, oh god, I already forgot. My brain is scabbed <laughs> over desperately trying to prevent the information from penetrating. Uh, his name was Zippo. Z-I-P-E-A-U. Um, yeah, I remember. Okay, so on to its weird, awful teeth things. Um, oh, 
Yes. We mentioned that this is one of the most basal ornithomimosaurus. Is it basal enough to still have teeth? Probably no. not. No. no. Cool. Just the most basal in the game, but okay. not yeah. one of the most basal in the clip. Yeah. It is a Garuda Mimeen, I think. Is that the name? Garuda Mimeen. Yeah, I know what the group you're talking about. Um, it's like Garuda Mimus, which is yeah. pretty normal looking. Yeah. Not like um, this. But, yeah, no. I mean, Garuda Mimus is like your fairly bog standard ornithomimosaur. It's, yeah, it's within the family Ornithomimidae. Uh, so, like, by that point, you are toothless. It's it's kind of the more early gotcha. branching of the mimids, things like Pelicanomimus, things like um, Shenzaosaurus. I think one of the other. Bai Long. Yeah, that sounds right. Bai Long is an enormous one, but it's in that group. Archosaurus, um, I saw it might be. Maybe it would make more sense to save Dinochirus discussion for Gallimimus, because Gallimimus is big and be like. Yeah. You know yeah. what's bigger than Gallimimus? <laughs> you know what's uh, too big? Dinochirus. This is another group, though, that, like, you know, we've got... So, one nice thing about Bai and Cherie is oh that God. it has Gigantoraptor, um, which is a giant over raptor But And we have traces of one at Erin Tabasu as well, which is, further supports the idea that they might be the same, like, relative time slice. But there's, like, scraps of giant ornithomimosaurs from elsewhere in the world too. They seem to be this weird phantom that's not showing up in the fossil record despite being enormous. And another thing that's also doing that are giant ornithomimosaurs like Dinochirus, which we will talk more about at some other point, but there is now evidence of them in North America too. And they big, they real big, they bigger than T-Rex and they are just not showing up in the record. They refuse to appear. That probably isn't indicative of any serious systemic well, issues, right? I think it's Probably just because they were, they were big, but they were also little stinkers, right? And they didn't, they didn't die where they were supposed to, right? Uh, um, they I mean, they were presumably. Dinochirus is bigger than T Rex, right? I mean, it's so certainly in dimension. height. In, in height, height yeah. Right? Okay, it's height. taller than T Rex. It's almost as massive too. The estimated mass of Dinochirus is 6.5 metric tons. Oh, my God. 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 Too, too big. <laughs> too big to walk? <laughs> too big to preserve. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and by too big, I just mean I would prefer that those animals never evolved. Yeah. God, and it's, it, they were semi, like, they were wading around in the water. They probably stank. Oh, God. Were they, or was that just a meme? That's well. If you watch prehistoric planet, that's what they have been doing. They do have like crabs and in their stomach, right? Or like I think oh, that's, so. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, and the the head of Dinochirus looks pretty, like, shoreline to me. Yeah. It gives no, like, it gives shore bird. It was definitely something I would believe. I forgot about the gut contents. But I believe it off the anatomy, but I just was concerned it was like a runaway meme. Meme, but no, it, it seems to be legit. That's good. Is it? I don't know if anything about those animals is good, to be honest. It's I don't know if anything dinosaurs. About... You know what isn't one of my favorite dinosaurs? Archaeorna the Mimus. Right, an animal that is so boring, we are looking for any excuse to talk about any other dinosaur. Well, like, you could do an Archaeorna the Mimus design that would compel us to talk about it. Like, if it were beautiful. Yeah, it's just not right, this. Yeah. If they had included it as a feathered ornithomimosaur, like if they had waited and held off and then put it in with the feathered stuff, like, oh, we'll just throw Archaeornithomimus in because we can give it feathers with the, the like, Dominion yeah. pack. And it was mentioned in the movies once. But unfortunately, it's a carryover from the first game. And as James mentioned, it's a carryover from a throwaway line that kids find it hard to say Archaeornithomimus, which and I don't think they would. If you've ever even... met a dino kid, they do not struggle with dino names. Like, that is their whole interest. Honestly, like, the Archaeornithom... Like, the game needs an Ornithomimosaur rig that has feathers on it. Yeah. So, like, maybe just Ornithomimus, and then I can breed those and pretend that they're all the other... That that's mm -hmm. Archaeornithomimus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And like, as as we've been saying, there's a lot of way harder dinosaur names to pronounce. Um, like Shinzaosaurus. Like Shinzaosaurus. Like, um, oh god, uh, what are some ones that you guys screw up a lot? Oh, um, well, there's one that I literally cannot do because I don't know how to make the. Sound. Oh, and Quabosaurus. Oh, no. which I, can't. I think that's. Wait, how you do, do that it. again, Scott. I think it's Lequibosaurus. No. Or Lequibosaurus. I, I don't know. Yeah. Say it again. Wait. Do... Wait. It's it's. There's like a deep sound in the name. It's like Thesaurus or something. I can't do it. I, can... I don't know. No, it's not a click. No. I, I mean, thought it was a click. It bear... No, it's something I mean, that is a sort of. Like. It's, it's like a throat it's... click. It's like a, it's kind of like a sucking click, like oh. they, they must look, yeah, like that. Right, that's a hard name to say. They should have had they should have had uh, Bryce Dallas Howard perfectly emulate a clicking sound in a in an African language that is like so alien that most Western people can't even learn to make. Well, yeah, sound. I mean it's on, it's only it's only hard to say because we're because we whitey. Oh yeah, no, exactly. I mean it's just the well, kind of thing if you're not if you're not exposed to the sound early on, it is one of the hardest sounds to train yourself to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but they should have taught her to do it specifically for the throwaway <laughs> line where she says, you know, you think, you think that's hard to say. You should hear yeah. a kid try to say this and then perfect, like just nail it. Yeah. Or do we want to, um, we can, we can continue our discussion of hard names and whatnot. I just had the idea. Do we want to see some of these things die? Yes. To body please. harm. <laughs> Yes, I would like to see them all come to harm. All right. So there, there's something we, in this for electric. Can we make a mod where one of them gets their head stuck in, like, the hatchery door? Why are you on fast forward, Dalton? Uh, to make them hungry faster. <laughs> oh, I see. So, do yes. You, do you have hunger on? I do have hunger on for carnivores. Ah. You may see that these are all very bland skinned Chinchasaurus, and that's because they're standing in for Electrosaurus, a dinosaur that we know very little about. Based on what I've heard about undescribed material, which I think Thomas Carr might be publishing on soon. I don't, I'm not clear on, is it the undescribed yeah. stuff? I am not sure if it's the undescribed stuff, but whatever it is, he told me the other day that he uh, was submitting the most recent revision to it. So it's uh -huh. it's coming along. Cool. Right, no, because I know he was re-describing the holotype of Electrosaurus, but there's other Electrosaurus material in China that I heard a rumor he was working on, but I don't think that's the current paper. I don't believe so either. I think that's something that he got screwed out of with COVID. Because I know he I was think planning so. to go to Asia in 2020, and yeah. obviously that was not a good time to be there. Right. Best well, plan. there's rumors that Electrosaurus might be a long-snouted Tyrannosaur. What implications that would have for what we described in the past video that we recorded so recently and that came out a week before you're watching this um, are not really clear. It depends on where it would wind up going in the phylogeny. Currently, Electrosaurus is considered to be in the smear of intermediate tyrannosaurs that are getting big. If it has a long snout, it might mean that that kind of behavior or morphology is ancestral to tyrannosaurs. It would be interesting. What's, what's currently known as like a hip and a leg, right? That's at AMNH. There are skull fragments that are not confidently assigned to go with that individual, and we're actually given the wrong specimen number. It partially overlaps with an undescribed troodontid. Wow, wow, um, okay. I remember having to email Carr about this, and I think it's getting, I think they're getting renumbered. Because they were both given the same number, um, it's a it's a hip and a leg essentially. Not, not um, to disparage the M and H, but that seems to happen a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of the stuff from Aaron Debasu was actually never numbered. Uh, all of the troodontid material that I'm currently working on, like they're given sequential numbers in the tens of thousands, which indicates that I think they were done quite recently. I, they just opened a crate. Um, and every element has a different number because we have no surviving quarry maps or anything to know what individuals they pertain to. So it's like 200 individual bones with a different number in the like 36,000 range or something. I forget off the top of my head. It's been a while yeah. since we've worked at it. Yeah. Is that, um, was it Electrosaurus? We looked at the foot for for Solaris. Yes. Yeah, that was Electrosaurus. It's a cool foot. It's a cool foot. Um, I'm excited to hear more about it. Yeah, no, it'll be nice to... Learn. I'm also excited for Electrosaurus to try to kill something. Which it's well not doing. Well, we just gotta wait for it to get into the low food zone. Um, the one thing I would bring up, the, the only detail about this model on Elect or on Archaeornithomimus that's right, 
is that the hands face each other. But the arms are so messed up that I don't even really care to give the credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, they should be in the they, they should be in the hunky zone now. <laughs> Looking for the hunky zone. Hunky zone. <laughs> They're all hungry. Mm, mm, mm. They're also all sleeping and doing the weird Chinzosaurus just stand there and do nothing thing. I don't know why <laughs> Chad stance. They do that in this game, but because they're goofy. They're just they're just a they're couple silly, of guys. Goofy I really hope that they actually can. Is combat on? Combat should be on, but let me double check. I mean, the traditional combat. combat we hunger, hunger, make sure hunger is on. Hunger is obviously on. No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't worry. I, <laughs> um, dinosaurs don't starve as herbivores only. I say. Dinosaur injuries on. Combat frequency is combat is off. There we go. Combat was off. Okay. Yeah. So now it's the traditional part of this video where we have to show that. There's so many. There's oh, so there many, we go. Oh, there we go. Different settings. All right. Doing the hinky run. Where is? Which one are you hunting down? That one. That's okay. Big confusion. You know the herding behavior is helping. Them. Well, not helping enough. It's all ogre. Oh Jesus! Yeah, oh, and there, really there we have it, folks. Back. He's gonna stare. Shall we? Oh, there's, oh, there's another hunt. Too. There's another one happening over there. Oh, and there's another one. Oh my gosh! I want to watch the neck get degloved again. <laughs> I told you. Yeah, no, that would definitely deglove the Archeorn of the Mimas, and that might make the muscle look better. <laughs> How well, could you tell? Shall yeah. we take it to the species viewer? Yeah, let's. I do think it. we shall. And get some final thoughts on the dinosaur. We have so much yeah. to say about. Do they even make good noises, or are the noises just kind no, of? No, they're okay. The, the noises are like kind of a little bit different from Struthiomimuses, and I do like Struthiomimuses, but they're just they're fine. It's fine, and they they're, uh, but it's not fine. It hurts me. No. I was gonna say this to me is gonna get. I might break the mold a little bit, and you might be surprised by this. I'm going to say C tier only because the color patterns are quite nice. Hmm. I it's particularly like. like C. I, 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 I exactly. want to exactly. I want to remind you because it's boat shaped and boats go in the sea. <laughs> I want to remind you our C tier currently is inhabited by Hoyangosaurus Diplodocus and the Jurassic World Velociraptor. Yeah, I say this hurts my eyes about as much as blue from Jurassic World does. I I don't. I think if it were boring colors or if they were ugly colors, it would be worse. But I kind of like the splash of color on the eyes going down the side of the neck. I like the stripe patterns. I'll say C. All right, Amelia. I I don't like it. I don't think the colors save it. Because some of the like one of the colors is really bad. Like I think it's the purple one where it's like pinkish and that just makes it worse mm. to me because it looks like I don't know it's I don't like it someone said rotisserie chicken and that's all I can see now and that I, I really hate it so I'm going to give it a D so I agree with James that the colors on it are actually really nice I love the striping on the tail I love the little splash of color on uh, the sides by the arm and the little stripes going down the neck the little bandit mask that you can give it I think that those are fantastic and if anything it makes me more angry because they're really good colors on an awful awful animal you wasted it this is D tier design Hands down, by far, I I don't want to look at it anymore. You're all cowards. <laughs> My turn. Yeah, color's nice, color's good, but like, I can't with good conscience put this in like C tier because Hoyangosaurus, despite its design, makes cute little sounds and makes me feel good. And the Diplodocus at least reminds me of walking with dinosaurs and gives me fond childhood memories. This gives me nothing, except I wish they had put these. This was a like color patterning allowed for Struthiomimus. D. What's in D tier currently is anything? Nothing. This yeah. would be the first. Well, this is going to go there because it's a D tier for me too. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> like again, the colors are great, I, and I'm so I'm, I'm like Scott, and it makes me mad that the colors aren't on a better model. Um, man, I don't like this. I never put these in my parts. I, 
I I made them once so that I could like unlock the genome, and I never made them again. You know except what? for in this video. It would have been a whole lot. That mission that we talked about with the Struthiomimus one, where you just have to feed an absolute <laughs> load of them to theropods, um, would have been a whole lot more palatable if it was these guys. All right. It's a terrible design. All right, so, Scott, are, are you ready to rank it? I am very, very honored to be putting this exactly where it deserves to be, which is D tier. <laughs> I hate this animal so much. It's a bad animal. Hopefully, I'm glad we never have to look at it again. It will be a whole lot worse than whatever we're getting next when we spin, spin the, 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 the wheel. wheel. All right, let's see. If it's the Deinonychus design, things can actually get worse. Things are getting a lot better. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Oh, yeah. thank God. Hamalocephali. Oh, great. We, okay. You may, you may be able to tell this from our energy right now, but we cannot wait to record a video about this, which it dawns on me, I think in real time, we'll be recording in about five weeks. <laughs> <laughs> the next time we sit down to record one of these because we pre-recorded so, so much for you not only can we wait we must wait we have to wait oh that'll be a fun one that'll be. be fun we're gonna have a good time with it so make sure that you not only subscribe but hit the little bell so that you get notified as soon as our video about hemelocephala comes up and every other video we make comes up Remember to hit the like button on this video also so that we uh, you know, get promoted to the algorithm and YouTube gives us the serotonin we need to continue making new videos. We only get serotonin if we get new subscribers and we get likes on our videos and we get a lot of views. So help us out. It's our only source of it these days. We're all early career academics. Serotonin <laughs> does not come easily. Except for me. Except for you with your real job and decent living wage. Um, so if you've ever wondered why Scott is the most cheery of us, it's because he's compensated for his effort. <laughs> um, anyway, like, subscribe, go to our Redbubble page and buy a piece of Archaeornithomimus uh, merchandise if you want to make whatever you own worse. <laughs> put, um, put it on your enemy's car. Yeah, buy somebody you don't like the miniskirt. Jesus. I The actual animal is not that bad. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> It's and really amazing. The, like, the they had to go out of their way to make a terrible design. The skull designs are based on the real animal. Yeah. Not the bad animal. Yeah. Although it will be hard to differentiate this from the Struthiomimus. I will try my best. All the Ornithomimids look the damn same. Wait, Ooh. is there a skull known of Archaeornithomimus? I thought it was all Yes, but not a jaw. Not a jaw. Wait, really? I haven't seen this According to image. Wikipedia. Hmm. I think it's very scrappy. Fear not, I'll figure it out Either when way. I when time comes to draw it. Either way.